Hi, I'm Anthony Harris from uh, Cleveland Rotary Club. Happy to represent them. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Once again, I just want to say thank you all for having me here. Uh, my name is Anthony Harris from the Cleveland Rotary Club of Cleveland. Um, <laughs> Cleveland Rotary Club. Okay, that's funny. Um, <clears throat> but um, good morning, everyone. Today, we live in a nation widely influenced by music. And once upon a time, a song by John Mayer rang out all over this great nation, a song that was heard and understood nationwide. The chorus of that song read, love who you love, who you love. Yes, love who you love, who you love. But why is it that some people in this nation feel that they can't love who they love, who they love? Why is it that some people can't even fathom having their certificate of authenticity saying that they may indeed love who they love, who they love? Maybe, just maybe, because they're homosexual. Today, I will be using the Rotary four-way test questions to speak on the limitations of homosexual rights. And I'll be putting emphasis on marriage. Question one, is it the truth? Is it the truth that in 33, yes, 33 out of 50 U.S. states do not allow homosexual marriage? even though that it says in the Constitution that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So why is it that some people feel that they can't be wed? Isn't that funny? So why is it that those of a different sex relation have different marital rights than those of the same sex relation? Um, is it true that 40% of homosexual teens feel, um, are 40% more likely to commit suicide? Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm really choked up. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm trying not to cry right now. Uh, so why is it that homosexual teens are 40% more likely to commit suicide than their heterosexual counterparts? Why? Because the fact that we say that homosexuals cannot be married has put a stigma in our mind saying that homosexuality is wrong. And because we believe that homosexuality is wrong, throughout the years we've begun to persecute the homosexual. And because the homosexual teen is persecuted, they can no longer take it and they take their own lives. This is why they are 40% more likely to commit suicide. Is it the truth that in 2013 alone there were 6,222 homosexual based hate crimes? Imagine this, a homosexual man, Dwayne Wynn, is walking down the street. A car pulls up behind him. Four men jump out of the car, screaming homosexual base slurs. These men are wielding baseball bats. They begin to beat this man senselessly. Dwayne Wynn breaks three of his fingers, trying to protect his face from the violent and malicious attack. He also breaks three of his ribs. He has a busted eye socket and 18 stitches to the back of the head. Why? Because he was homosexual. This is not, th this is true, this is the truth. Question two, is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair that in only 17 out of the 50 U.S. states, homosexuals can be wed? But in all 50, people can dress up their dogs and have a little dog wedding. Is that fair to all concerned? Is that humane should be the question. Is it fair that every day I wake up, I can say that I'll be able to marry one of the two girls I am madly in love with, but my cousin Madison, on the other hand, cannot because she's gay? Is it fair? Is it fair? Is it fair that in 17 states, gays can be married? Here's fact. 85%, yes, 85% of homosexual relationships will stay together and last, but only 50% of heterosexual marriages will stay together and half will end in divorce. So is it fair that those of a different sex relation can still be wed even though those of the same sex relation cannot, even though they have an 85% chance at staying together? This is not fair to all the people concerned. Question three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will not allowing homosexuals to be wed build goodwill and better friendships? Well, sorry, I keep going blank here. Um, goodwill and better friendships. Uh. 
Well, hopefully you don't mind if I answer this question with a few questions of my own. How can possibly not allowing homosexuals to be married build goodwill and better friendships? How can goodwill be made when you strip a gay of an equal opportunity and a right to be married? And how can better friendships be made when a gay's right to marry is limited? The same limitations on the rights during the Jews and the Holocaust. No different from the limited rights of, of African Americans in America during 400 years of slavery and racial discrimination. Just the same as the limitations put on blacks in Africa during apartheid. So the final answer to these questions is, it cannot. Goodwill and better friendships cannot and will not be made when you exclude a gay's right to be married. Question four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will not allowing homosexuals be be to be married be beneficial to all concerned? Well, obviously it has not been beneficial to homosexuals and their emotions. But when 23% of the homosexual community are, are voting for things that they believe are right, our communities and our government fall. And when 77% of the homosexual community are not voting for things that they believe are right, our, community, our nation falls as well. And if we continue down this road, our nation will fail and no one benefits from that. So today I've spoken and hopefully we've all realized that not allowing homosexuals to be wed is wrong. And then one day we may be able to say that it is the truth, that it has been fair to all concerned, that it's built goodwill and better friendships, and that it has been beneficial to all concerned. Then one day, maybe, just maybe, we'll all be able to say that we can love who we love who we love. Yes, love who we love who we love. Thank you.